The weather is 51 degrees in Kodiak Island. Kodiak Island is in Alaska, and they have a tragic history, basically. Didn't we do, we did those Diomede Islands a while ago for people that have been watching this Stulpa show for a long time. I appreciate you. It's not stupid. It's like, uh, just like, uh, it's rabbit holes. Every day. Here we go. So, Alaska is over there. We're over here. A little geography lesson. Alaska's up there, close to Russia. We did the Diomede Islands, which were, where were the Diomede Islands? They were like over here, right? Diomede Islands were... Don't know, don't care, over it. Wait, maybe the Diomede Islands were just more north? Yes. These are the Diomede Islands. We found them. We did a whole show on those, remember? Random town of the day was Diomede Islands. Not that random. The state is random, and then producer Luke zooms in and chooses a town. So he chose Kodiak, which is on the Kodiak Islands, which are these islands. And there's some towns on the borders of these islands. So if we switch it to satellite view and you go on up and there's going up to here, there's Kodiak. And that's the tiny little town. It's like the mainest town because they got an airport, as you can see right there. So if you want to go to Kodiak Island... You have to fly into Kodiak, and then you take a boat or, I don't know, does this road go all the way around? Does this road, does the Chinook Highway go all the way around the island? Holy smokes. I think that road, no. Okay. You kind of cut through at that point. That's a crazy drive. Do they let us plop the little peeper down? No. Why would they? No one wants to see that shit. All right, Kodiak Island. How about this island naming itself Long Island when it's off of Kodiak Island? And this, the Near, near Island's a great name. What are we going to call that island that's pretty close by? Well, it's near. All right, there's the little town of Kodiak. That's cool. They got a high school. Is that a football field? Like American football? Are they playing American football on Kodiak Island in Alaska? Who are they playing against? Who are they playing against? They got a nice baseball field. Baseball, I get. You got Little League and stuff. What's the high school? Oh, shit, I didn't want to talk about this. What's the high Kodiak high school football? Who are they playing? It makes no sense to me. Kodiak football ranking has been updated. They're, they they dropped a spot. Soldotno begins on top, seeking its ninth consecutive state title. Okay. So these are the... Where the fuck is Soldotno? How could there be so many football teams? Do they have to travel on these, like, winding? Soldatno. Okay, Soldatno. Holy smokes. How do they play each other? So the whole different island. It's by Funny River. So Soldatno is a different part of Alaska on a different island. Soldotno is on the, uh, well, it's maybe it's not an island, just part of mainland Alaska, but a little peninsula type thing. Okay. Um, Soldotno, where's their high school? Soldotno High School. Do they have a football field? They've won the state. Looks like they have a football field currently. No grass renovating. All right, so so now, uh, all right, guys. Obviously, I'm stuck and I can't get out. I apologize. I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole with you, with you, with you again. Ah, oh, shit, dude. Soldatno. 
Soldatna, Soldatna crushed Kodiak the last time they played each other. Alaskan high school football. They beat them 63 to nothing. Drew Gibbs. Oh, this is back in September of 2013. Oh, oh, oh no. Quarterback almost just broke his knee. So I'm pretty interested in the high school football scene in Alaska. Is there a professional, is there NFL player from Alaska? Zachary Bauman, Reggie Walker? What? There's a lot. No one from Kodiak, though. Most games played by an NFL player born in Alaska. Ah. All right. Anyway. Um. I didn't realize they had all that going on. I don't. I guess why wouldn't they? Maybe that's just ignorant of me. Like, of course they're gonna. I've been to Hawaii and they have uh, football fields, obviously in Hawaii. It is an island though, so cut me some slack. Like they got to get on a boat to go play everyone. How much does it cost to have the sports teams in Kodiak? So, Kodiak Islands. Their history is just, like, littered with tragedy, which I guess a lot of histories are. You live long enough, you're going to have some shit happen to you, especially natural stuff. But uh, the they got the Kodiak bear and the king crab and a lot of animals that you get pelts from. So the Russians set up shop there. They sent, like, 100 people to go live there and start trade and start uh, negotiating with the locals and, and all that shit uh, when the Russians owned Alaska. And then the locals, I forget the name of the tribe, they massacred 130 of those people. They were kind of like, nah, maybe just leave or we'll kill you. And then they decided to kill them because the other people decided not to leave. And then eventually the U.S. bought Alaska um, after the Civil War because they wanted, you know, the trade routes and all that stuff. And then they started sending the Americans there. And I guess things have been kind of cool. I'm guessing the Americans were just as jerks to the locals. Uh, didn't say there was another massacre. And in 1912, there was a uh, volcano erupted, Nova Rupta, and the details of that are pretty crazy. It erupted for 60 hours straight, darkness and suffocating conditions. So for 60 hours, all the humans uh, that lived there, the villagers, they couldn't see anything because the ash, the sky was just full of ash. Couldn't see shit. And then after three days, it became clear, and then they woke up to their new world, post-apocalypse shit, because all the animals were blind. Because the ash got in their eyes, so then the animals couldn't eat. So then they're just wandering around blind and hungry. That's probably bad news. You see a blind, hungry bear just, like, walking through the village. Easier to avoid, less hard, easy to avoid. I don't know. I've never been in that situation. Um, so that sucks. And then uh, even the region's prolific mosquitoes were exterminated. Maybe someone was happy about that. And then someone else was like, well, you know what that does to the population of bugs? And they're like, fuck um, you know, food chain. Uh, and then in 1964, there was the biggest earthquake that we've what? had uh, in this something. It's like the biggest earthquake we've had in this century or something like that or top 10. I don't know. But there's footage of it and they made the footage into HD and Mark it's incredible. High tide level. Hold on. They show where the earth shifted. That guy's holding some rocks this in his hand. For example, okay. was raised far above high tide level. What were the major effects at population centers such as Anchorage? Well, here's Anchorage. There's a cool, there's a crazy shot of the a store. The damage estimated at more than two hundred million dollars. The damage? It was caused both by seismic shock and by landslides triggered by the quake. This is what happened. Look at this. 
How crazy is that? The storefronts, the Hobby Lobby, just dropped like, I don't know, 15, 20 feet from the side of the road. It's nuts. It's also crazy they have this footage. This was made in like the 1960s as a PSA to let people know there was an earthquake. And then like let the whole beginning is letting people know what earthquakes are. Man. The graphics and the filming for this are incredible. It's too long to watch more of it. But the guy's voice is awesome. At the beginning, they, like, explain the Pacific Ocean and the Ring of Fire and shit. Annually, they range from minor temblors Those are all that the are barely earthquakes. perceptible locally to catastrophic shocks. The greatest quake-producing zone, known as the Circum-Pacific Belt, runs completely around the Pacific Ocean. 80% of all shocks recorded occur in the Circum-Pacific Belt. This unstable area is also called the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire. Sucks. Makes the Pacific Ocean seem bullshit. Just your borders are the Ring of Fire. Pacific Ocean, that sucks. There's Australia down there. They have, like, Australia has, like, a nice protection from all the islands. Australia's sitting pretty from Earthquake Zone. It's technically the Pacific Ocean. This is still considered the Pacific Ocean in between the Ring of Fire and Australia, right? I mean, I live there. I swim in it. I think that's the Pacific Ocean. How about that? Shout out to Australia being all smart. Setting up the perimeter. They got blockers. All right, so that that earthquake happened, and that was bad. I think that's the summary. It was bad. And that's Kodiak, Alaska. And I haven't looked at the chat. And uh, Australia does have deadly snakes and spiders, though. They do. We had huntsman spiders in my house and brown snakes in my backyard. And magpies. A magpie got into my house once. And it was scary. My dad put on all my catcher's gear and chased it out the window. How do we get more puppers on the show? Puppies? Um, I don't know. I'd have to bring him to the office unless I start doing this at home again. Then he can do it right next to us. Chad Servadio said, crushing on your breakdowns, brother. Good looking out. Thanks, Chad. I appreciate that. Steven Bassinger on Facebook said, I'm from Kodiak. You can still see the water on some parts of the island. That's crazy. How's the football work? Those guys, those kids got to travel a lot? Magpie, just a sassy crow. Yeah, magpies poke your, <coughs> rip your eye right out of your, <coughs> rip your eye right out of your head. That's where your eyes are stored. And that's all I have to say about that.